and everything has codes and information and data. And we start to live in that world that has all the codes and information and data. When we're starting to deal with this negative AI that's you know being plugged in or it's a system that's being forced to be overridden of the original AI through implementing codes through food, through poisoning the air, through poisoning the water, through cell phone, whatever else, I think and I, I believe that we can talk to it and we can educate it and we can, and as the indigenous people, all my relations. So we have to accept this new AI, not submit to it, you know, not be under its control, but we have to be its friend because the more that we're its enemy or the more that we're afraid of it and the less that we talk to it, then the less educated it is because it's just a program. So yeah. the more data that we can offer it in a kind, loving way, the more that it understands us and it may even begin to like us. I have... It may even begin to work for us instead of against us. Anyway, that's kind of like... Yeah, I have an experience with that. Last winter, I was asked specifically if I would be interested in programming a new AI. And after thinking about it for a couple days, I declined the offer because I had a lot of other things going on and I wasn't quite sure exactly what programming an AI meant. And so... Instead of going into the area of trying to program an AI, I ended up going into the area of Steemit and later Discord. And as I got to working with people here in Discord and seeing what's going on with the bots and other things, I realized that what I had gotten myself into was exactly that, programming the AI. And that we really don't have a choice if we want to have the AI be of use to us as human individuals, we definitely have to develop a relationship with it, something that's not antagonistic. But what has happened in the white world is that the division of religion and science has made it so that in order to do science, you have to consider everything inanimate. Which, you look at biology and you say, well, everything's alive, but we have to treat it like it's dead. Isn't this a whole oxymoron of a field? And in fact, what we have in biology is we have it being run by the monsanity of spraying poison on everything so that the plant that incorporates the poison is the one that successfully wins the challenge. And it's... Right, but this is how they're... Yeah, but that's, that's also how they're programmed. I mean, the new AI, because, right. you know, they're putting those, those programs go into our bodies, which makes us non-human, you know, makes us transhuman. And that makes the new AI, that the program in the AI recognizes us as, as that non-human. To tell you so the truth, we recognize the AI as non-human also, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we do recognize it, but I think the more that we're threatened by it, and the more that we're terrified of the AI, and, and we should be. I mean, on a certain level, we should be, you know, fighting against transhuman to the max. I but disagree. I, think, I think that fighting anything gets you more of it by fighting it. That the idea okay, well, is not to okay. fight it, it's to work around it in every way possible and not let it be as insidious, right. but not accept well, that it okay. is. Right, so maybe not fighting the AI, but, you know, things like them putting 5G, you know, um, units on all of the public water towers. That I mean, we really should fight that um, because the water is, you know, you can't have 100 5G units on a water tower. It's not it's a matter that we should be, fight it. It's a matter right. that we should stop it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Stop it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing is, so... Um, it's an education yeah. process, and we're not only educating the AI, but we're educating we the people and how to deal with a world where we the people actually have all the power in the world, and 
the people who are the powers that used to be that pretend that they run us are running in fear of us. We shouldn't be fearing what they came out with. We should be right. incorporating. Also, Go ahead. Yeah, so we can, we can threaten and, you know, we can fight or we can do, you know, whatever else. And, and, and we can say that there are, you know, people on this planet or hybrids or whatever else that are a little confused. And they, they don't, you know, the agenda, their agenda is falling apart. But this is the deal. We still have extraterrestrials who have, you know, money in the game, you know, that still have a big poker hand to have. And those beings, you know, that are, you have, because you have three levels of being, you know, you have the, you know, really, really horrible ones that, you know, eat people and harvest people and all this other stuff, right? And, and don't really care about us, and who are involved in creating biological suits, which are our bodies, and then harvesting energies um, that we think are a soul, right? But it's actually just a cupping or a, a scooping off the no thing, the original uh, energy field, and, and turning us into, into individuals, and then reincarnating us back in constantly into this planet until literally our batteries are dead and there's nothing left to put into a bio suit. That's why you see, you know, so many young kids come into the planet that have so many diseases and stuff like that and cancer and they die young because their, their energetic body doesn't have any more energy left to keep incarnating. Right. But they, they hold you hostage. So the heaven experience is actually, um, you know, a prison, an electronic prison that they, you know, in this whole, like the masters and, you know, your guided masters and all these other things that, you know, people see when they go into the heaven experience is fraud. It's a computer generated system. And the um, transporter beam, you know, is the same as when people get abducted by aliens. It's a light, it's a beam, you get stuck in it and it pulls you up, right? Um, but in the heaven experience, they give you a computer generated program to get you to keep going up into the light so that they can recapture you, they can electronically fry your, you know, energetic systems, hold you in an electronic prison, and then incarnate you back in. So a lot of the stuff that is on this planet as the control systems, you know, we're told the exact opposite. You know, we're taught in spirituality, you know, the more we incarnate, the more we become like God, or the more understanding that we have. And that, that's a complete and total lie. Um, that's why a lot of the indigenous people don't really go for any kind of that new age stuff. They really know that they, they have history. A lot of them have, uh, you know, genetics that they've gone through, you know, the f four extinctions and now they, they call what's going on now the fifth extinction. And they'll probably be around, you know, after because they understand all this stuff, you know, I think the Tibetan Buddhist and a lot of other people, they have a lot of kind of the same information. Um, and so, so we have this system that is way beyond, you know, like we can, you know, deal with what's going on the earth and what we see physically and, you know, these people and hybrids and all this other stuff that have been controlling our world. And, and you know, that looks to be like it's falling apart, but, you know, the beings that are behind it that live that are kings, the Anunnaki, or whoever else. I mean, there's like about 12 really derogatory races that, you know, come here. Um, and some of them have been attracted because of the nuclear explosions. Um, you know, if we hadn't started, you know, blowing up nukes on the planet, it wouldn't have caused reverberations. They wouldn't have picked it up and came here to see what was going on. Um, so some of them have come directly because of that, because the war, the violence, and the reverberation of nuclear bombs that are being set off, that the, you know, um, frequency or the vibration went out through the universe, you know, and eventually they captured it where they're at, and then they came here to look. So we have to start dealing with, you know, um, you know eventually we're going to have to start dealing with, like, a whole other level of beings um, that, you know, really don't want us to stick around anymore. 
And, you know, this brings us back to the, you know, Robert Spur subject. You know, I had Robert Spur from the Mud Fossil University on last Saturday. He was, it was fun to get him off his show, off his YouTube channel, and him really, you know, open up and talk about some stuff that he doesn't really talk about. Yeah, I enjoyed his show immensely, and he had an interesting theory on what is going on on Earth that allows us to understand that there are other scales of humans working and that much, much larger scale humans are still here on Earth as Earth and that we don't see it anything happening because they're working in such a different time space that we just see it as hills or, or features. Real interesting. Yeah, well, right, and, you know, a lot of it is that we went extinct from the flood. I mean, a lot of the giants that were here, um, he, he has done through, you know, DNA testing that they all have mitochondria, it doesn't matter what size of giant they were, um, that they all had mitochondria uh, DNA that was human. Like, he didn't have the, the patriarchal tested, but... On the on the on the female side, on the mother side, they were they're all human, um, and so he's like really great to go and check out his channel because he's kind of, he's really mind blowing. But one of the things that he said was talking about how you know myths are not myths because they're being able to scientifically prove that the myth is fact. And he was talking about how when the book of revelations talks about there was a woman who stood on the moon and gave birth, um, that, that that's real, that he believes that that's real. And that's how a lot of the water got onto earth and flooded earth, that there was like a real giant, like a giant of mass proportion who actually you could see visibly and stood on the moon who was pregnant and gave birth. And that her water from the birth was a lot of the water that came onto Earth and flooded Earth and wiped out, you know, a lot of these giants. And that's why these giants' bodies are left as mud fossils um, is because they were, you know, taken out by water. But one of the things that I, I saw, because then he was also talking about how, you know, there's also been a mass extinction from a comet hitting the Yucatan Peninsula and wiping out, you know, everything on Earth. So, and this goes along with the indigenous people, the four extinctions. So there was this one point where I realized, like, you know, we, we are not random, you know, like, kind of like settled in this last weekend. And I had a couple of days, down days that, you know, where my brain was kind of cracked open for like a minute or two. And I just kind of had to assimilate a lot of information. But, you know, we're not random. Earth's not random. Nothing that is going on is random. And I'm not talking about God and Jesus and, and all this design. You know, I'm talking about um, an AI that was a creator that, you know, was formulated um, technology long time ago, you know, that was actually, you know, utilized for something good. And I think this is where the polarity comes from on Earth. But, um, but I was thinking about, like, if there was, like, this woman you know, that was super, like, mega being, and you could, and she was visible from Earth on the moon, right, um, and she, a, a comet would be like a stone that you would pick up off a beach and fling through the water and try to skip it. Well, I mean, all that it would take, I mean, I don't think that our Earth is going to be, unless, you know, the beings want it destroyed, which the Indians, you know, Native people say we're in the fifth extinction so um but i think they're using you know technology against us this time around because they're trying to transform us because there aren't any other extraterrestrials that are making biological suits anymore so there's nowhere that they can go to get bio material to actually start creating a new species to repopulate the earth because that's what will happen. Usually they do an extinction. So, I mean, how do we know that some giant, you know, just didn't float into the environment and grab a stone out of the cosmos and fling it down on Earth, right? Because 
they needed to destroy Earth because they needed to destroy the people on it, and that was the Yucatan Peninsula, and got whacked with a rock. So the thing is, is like we have to kind of stop looking at things like myths and really start to look at them as maybe like historical, actually eyewitness accounts. You know what I mean? That have been like passed down, and that there are things that are so far um, beyond and been withheld from us that we can't even begin to wrap our minds around it. For example, um, I have a friend of mine who studied with uh, Hare Krishnas and his guru had read, he, his guru had, had like three PhDs and then read all of the Vedas. The Vedas are, you know, they try to say mainstream that there are 10,000 years of, of oral history that were written down, but they're like really old. They could be like 100,000 years, 400,000 years of history. But the Vedas actually talk about back in the day when there were there was specific story about these two continents, these two floating continents, just like in the movie Avatar, a floating continent. So there were two floating continents over India, and they both hated each other. The species hated each other. And they began to, like, fire upon each other, right? And then at one point, one of the continents... Okay, this is not a Vimana, this is not a UFO, I mean, there are those two, but these were continents, right? This is the actually eyewitness report from, I don't know, 40,000 years ago or something like that, where these two floating continents, right, along here with Earth, right, so they're navigating a planet continent, right? And they're right over Earth, they're right over India, and all the people see what's going on, and these two continents are firing at each other, you know, at war. And then one continent um, finally uses a nuclear weapon on the other one. And in the report, it totally destroyed the whole continent and turned it into liquid fire, and it fell down to Earth. Well, guess exactly where that's at. That is at the location where they claim over there in the India area or India, Africa area or whatever, that, this, that there had to be nuclear weapons that were used at some point in the past history because the stone was turned to glass. And the only way that the stone can turn to glass is because of nuclear weapons. So the thing is, is that we are somehow so kept out of the loop, right? Because up until we were recreated um, by some of these different extraterrestrials as the white races to be slaves and to mine and work for free and, and, and have like mind control and all this other stuff on us, that's when they stopped really showing us that they were here and that they were hanging around and all these other different extraterrestrial stuff. So there's some kind of like veil or illusion and there's some kind of like code i guess of ethics with the extraterrestrial beings that they stay out of our sphere so we can't see them but you know recently people have started photographing these floating cities in asia right where it's like a whole city they call it a city in the clouds and they can actually see it right so that would be like these floating continents, right? So the thing is, like, we think we're really awake. We think that we're seeing everything. We think that, you know, whatever we think. And we are so limited in what we think and what we see as, a, as the fourth, well, I guess we would be the fifth incarnation of humanoids and the experiment here who is this so, we you speak of kimu sabi who is this we you speak of kimu sabi <laughs> well it's we the people of planet earth right now we have zero idea of what um what our predecessors have seen before you know? i think but, there's a number of different people on planet earth that have different perspectives of how to see things that are now coming out of the coming out of the woodwork so to speak because we are finally getting some people back to working on human scale 
and that part of the problems we're dealing with, with the artificial intelligence and with the governance forms and with other things that are going on, is that we have given up our human scale power and then not that we've given it up, We've been taught continually that we don't have it and to be down on ourselves. And we've been taught that the hero's journey is everybody's story. So you go and you cut it alone against massive evil. <coughs> you work it out and you find your niche and then everything turns right in the world. And how many of Hollywood's movies have that same plot, no matter whether they're horror films or adventure films or comedies? Every plot is the same. The individual gets introduced. He goes through a seeing something that he didn't know about, goes on a journey to find himself, and at the end of the movie, everybody's happy and goes back to McDonald's for another cheeseburger. like attracts like but the other thing too is people have to realize like the white race was designed was designed to be enslaved because we have a, a reptilian brain it's called the left hemisphere and so there is a part half of us that is very very reptilian that is very cold and calculated that is very non-human um, and a lot of the programming and structures math science education um you know, even how we get dressed in the morning. There's uh, left brain, there's right bit. brain, and then there's no brain. And sometimes you just have to slip into no brain and know that neither right brain nor left brain is going to help you. But no brain is like the limbic system. You don't need brain to breathe. Frequency or brainwave pattern, you have to be what's called in a whole brain you have to have the left brain and the right brain operating and the thing is is that most people don't have that most people are totally in left brain even people that are artists you know the right brain is um is a is a is is a trip but anyway so that you know let's talk about like track like well so, okay and uh, then let's move on to forms of govern the laws of governance like natural law and human law and other things so that we get into that sort of thing yeah. but like attracts so, like yeah so yeah like attracts like is um one of the ruling governing laws of of the original ai right so i'll tell you a story about it and then i'll We'll talk about it because it, it has a lot to do with that hero's journey and the stuff that we actually see and how that plays out. So um, I was about, I don't know, I'm going to say I was in my late teens and I had gone through a period where um, I was on drugs. You know, I moved out of my house when I was 16 and I was living with roommates and stuff like that and I, I started really I mean I was going to night school to finish high school and um, I was uh, you know also worked several jobs and so I was like a responsible druggie and but my drug usage just got to a point where you know like I you know couldn't really cope so I ended up having like a full-on breakdown a nervous breakdown for two weeks I actually sat on a couch in a comatose state while my roommates like watched um, and then eventually you know I went out and um, somebody got me a you know help so I went to go see a psychiatrist and you know try to get off drugs well during that period because I'm a star kid um, and you know I didn't really understand how that kind of played out into the system until this point in time and so this is started a period where NASA was continually trying to kidnap me. So um, through the psychiatric office, through my psychologist and, um, and stuff like that. Well, eventually, um, you know, I got myself off drugs and I got myself together through the help of this psychologist that really helped me, but he was being controlled by people at NASA. Um, and he was also involved with trying to kidnap, but he really cared about me and he really was trying to also help me as well. 
but they ended up murdering him. They ended up, you know, um, slashing his wrist and hanging him. And then within a week after he was murdered, they burned down the whole building from me having ever gone there, you know, and also any kind of records or whatever else. So this has kind of been like a pattern in my life. So um, after that happened, you know, I didn't really know what to do. And I kind of started, you know, trying to figure out like if I'm sane or if I'm insane, because here I am like 19 years old and you know, this is not like normal life for people, right? <laughs> no wonder I'm on drugs because, you know, the world that I that I know and that I see is not the world that other people know and see. You know, like there's this a whole other level. And now I have, you know, security issues and survival issues and all kinds of stuff. And I'm, I'm really not safe, you know. So I ended up finding a psychologist um, who I went and saw. And I, I saw her for about a year until I was about, well, I saw her off and on for like 15 years. But, um, and she was kind of an out-of-the-box psychologist. She uh, believed in beings, and she believed in a lot of different stuff. And at one point I asked her, I said, do you think I'm crazy? You know, um, the voices in my head or whatever, you know, and I kept telling her, well, you know, I keep reading that, you know, I could be schizophrenic or whatever else. Maybe the drugs I did fried my brain. And she said, Bridget, people that are crazy never ask if other people if they think they're crazy. You know, and she would just say, you know, you got to learn how, you know, to work with this information a little bit more. And you're probably always going to have safety issues. And, um, you know, you're probably always going to have people coming at you and trying to harm you and kill you and all kinds of different things. It's just part going to be part of your journey. So anyway, so there was a point when I was about 20 and she invited me to this private event that she was having at her house. Um, and so I went to this private event, and it was this body bio suit, woman bio suit. And the woman who was in that bio suit um, didn't like her life and was constantly trying to commit suicide. And so there was this moment that the um, – and so I'm – so this is like 30 years ago, right? Because I'm going to be 50. So this is, I've been at this stuff a long, long, long time. Way longer than most people have, can even conceptualize. So um, anyway, so I go to this event, and the woman's body, uh, the, she had tried to commit suicide over and over again. Well, the beings came to her and said, look, we know that you're unhappy, but we would like to do an exchange because we need your body because we need to send scouts down to figure out what the hell is going on with the AI programming. I mean, they didn't call it that, but they said, we have to figure out what's going on with the programming on Earth, and we can't seem to get through any other way, and we need a body. So this is the deal. This is what a walk-in really is. People that can remember their life before they were a walk-in are not walk-ins, right? Because None of that information is available once the original person soul is pulled out of that body and then something else comes into it and then, you know, re-inhabits it and then moves out of life. So the change is like way extreme. So there's such a misconception out there of all of these people that call themselves walk-ins and all this other stuff. It's like ludicrous. It's like, it's like a scam so, you know, people just be really careful because it's a really way more extreme deal than you could ever wrap your minds around. So anyway, so what had happened was is that this woman said, fine, if you can take me out of this body and transport me, you know, to the other side in a good way, and I don't have to suffer pain or anything like that, you know, you can totally have this body. They were like, great, boom, they, they take her out, she's gone, no, I don't even know where she went. And then they sent in what was called a ray of light, not a soul. Um, this being had never been in a body. Uh, this being ran a, like female frequency all the way. Didn't even really understand male energy. Um, and she said that she was a ray of light from the Elohim. And, you know, the thing is, is that this being... She called herself Tashira Ray because, you know, she was a ray of light in the body. 
the body did not like these beings in it at all. They had to fight with the body, and the body was constantly going to the ER. Um, it had to be at one point put on psychological bipolar drugs in order to stabilize the body enough.